All right, so Dodge has unveiled their final last call edition, the Demon 170, and what, what a reveal it was. If you saw their live stream of the unveiling event or you watched my video where I was there at the event, or both, uh, Dodge came out swinging with that last unveiling, flying it in on a helicopter and then doing a pass down the drag strip, and it was quite the sight to see. I am the Demon 170, it's an amazing car. I am the name 170s for 170 proof, which is the same thing as saying E85, and making 1,025 horsepower on E85 is incredible, and especially for an American production car. I mean, that was a feat that Bugatti did back in 2005 with the Veyron. Now, granted, the Veyron does it with 93 octane pump gas. The Demon 170 does require E85 to get there, but at the end of the day, it does get there, and it does so in a true American muscle fashion and Dodge craziness fashion and it is just absolutely insane. And of course, NHRA has already banned it. I mean, the car runs an 890 in the quarter mile. I mean, that's just mind boggling fast to think about for a production car. And it's really cool to see Dodge going out on that type of a note for the Hellcat engine era. I mean, we're gonna see a lot of changes in the next few years when the automotive industry, especially at Dodge, because I mean, Dodge has really been hammering the big horsepower vehicles for the last few years, well, the better part of two decades at this point. And so it's gonna be really interesting to see how things go forward. But let's go ahead and talk about that Demon 170 because that is what we're here for today. And it does just absolutely amazing things. I mean, it does a zero to 60 in 1.66 seconds. It does a full two Gs on the acceleration when you launch it. Of course, like the original Demon, it pulls the front end off the ground. And it's just a really incredible work of art and, and engineering feat. I mean, the amount of effort that Dodge had to go through to upgrade the internals of the engine, the suspension, everything to be able to withstand that amount of power is amazing. And then to still have the price tag under $100,000 is just remarkable. Now, of course, a lot of you know, most dealers are marking these things up as what Dodge is trying to avoid by having the dealer and the buyer have to do a notarized paperwork that says what they sold the car for. Now, I get it. I Dodge is trying to minimize the uh, dealer markups on these cars and trying to prioritize those that are not paying markups compared to those that are. Um, but I mean, as you all know, there are ways around all of that. I, mean, I Good attempt on Dodge's part, but at the end of the day, I, and I've been talking to several dealers and the results are, the reality is people are calling dealers and offering 100, 150, $200,000 over MSRP for these cars. So you can sit here and say all oh, the dealers are price gouging the market, but the reality is the consumers are dictating what the prices are gonna be on these cars. I mean, sure there are some dealers that are offer them an MSRP or slightly over 15, 25,000, but on average from what I've been hearing, people are offering a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars over MSRP, and as a result, I mean that's really what the market dictates. I mean we can sit here and say that well MSRP should be what they're gonna be forced to be selling at. Well. If you force the dealers to sell at MSRP, a lot of the people that are buying these cars at MSRP are gonna just turn around and flip them to make that hundred to $200,000 themselves. So you're just kicking it down the road. And at the end of the day, that's what's gonna be happening. So getting mad at the dealers is definitely not the right way to go about this. You should be mad at your fellow consumers who are willing to pay that much for these cars. And of course there are people out there who say, well, the true enthusiasts are the ones who can't afford to be paying these high sticker prices, but since when does your level of passion for an automobile dictated based off of how much money you make or don't make? I mean, that's really absurd to think that someone who makes six or seven figures or eight figures a year is less passionate about the automotive hobby as a person who's making minimum wage. I mean, that's just absolutely ludicrous to think that. And a lot of the times, I mean, people are saying that the true enthusiast can't afford the cars. Well a lot of these true enthusiasts that are being identified can't afford it at MSRP in the first place. So if you're already at a point where you've got cars that are selling for over sticker, does it really matter who's buying it? I no, not really. I mean, this is the same game you play with your exotic cars. I mean, with your Ferraris and your Lamborghinis, Porsches. I mean, 
the GT3 RS, the latest Porsche iteration came out with, I think it has a sticker price of 200,000 and dealers automatically are saying it's 100 to 200,000 over MSRP, period. And they're not even having the conversation. It's not like they're getting people pounding on their doors offering them this much. They're just calling their clients and saying, this is what you're gonna pay. So it's a very interesting dynamic. And at the end of the day, it's manufacturer suggested retail price. It's not what the market dictates. I mean, if the if people don't want the cars and they're only willing to pay like sixty thousand dollars for them, doesn't matter if your MSRP is a hundred thousand dollars. That's what the market dictates. In this case, it's the other way around. And same thing with your Z06 Corvettes, your Hummer EVs. I mean, any any market you can go and see examples where the prices aren't selling at MSRP and people getting upset about that. I mean, well. That's unfortunately the reality. And there's a lot of things that I'd like to have that I can't afford, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna go and blame other people who can afford them for putting it that way. It is it is what it is, it's free market. I mean, it's, it's how our economy works. And so that's enough of that tangent. Uh, one thing I did see that was interesting when I was reading about the Demon 170 is if you are a current Demon owner from the first generation of the 2018 models and you decide to buy a Demon 170, you do have the opportunity to place the order for a Demon 170 and have that serial number match your first Demon. So you could have a match set of Demon and Demon 170. So I think that's really cool. Now there are definitely some notable changes from the Demon from 2018 and the Demon 170. Uh, you With the Demon 170, you now only have the fender flares on the back, not the front. Uh, I believe I read it was about a 17 pound or 16.9 pound weight savings by getting rid of those flares. You can also get carbon fiber wheels to save even more weight. And they even offer a factory parachute option because it does clear 145, I believe is the requirement for HRA, but it does do 151 miles an hour in the quarter mile. So you can order it with a factory parachute. Now granted, if you want to take it down to the drag strip and run it, you're going to have to have a cage installed. Chrysler does not offer a cage as an option for that car. And uh, so you can also choose from, I think, 14 different colors and a wide variety of other options for the car. So from that standpoint, I really like this over the other last call editions because there's a lot of options that you can choose from to make the car truly unique to yourself. I mean, I get with other ones like the Black Ghost and the King Daytona, you want them very specific, trying to make them very similar to what the original cars were um, or homage to those vehicles. Uh, but having this option to be able to have a very unique set of options for yourself is really cool. So that's enough of me rambling about that car this week. What are your guys' thoughts on all of it? The Demon 170, the Dodge's last call editions in general, dealer markups, all of those fun topics that we hit on today. I'm really interested to know what your thoughts are on, on each and every one of those. So go ahead, put those in the comment section down below because as you know, I read all of your comments. And on that note, guys, I will see you in the next video.